In this video, I'm going to show you how to make your A7 III footage look cinematic fast. What's up guys, Ryan here. I'm actually really excited about this video because the past few months I've been spending a lot of time making the perfect picture profile for the Sony a7 III. In addition to the picture profile I've created, I've also created a series of professional LUTs that you guys can use either as a starting point or for your final product. Now you can use the picture profile by itself and the LUTs by themselves, but they're really meant to be used together. The LUTs essentially optimize this picture profile that I've created for the a7 III to really bring out those rich, deep cinematic colors. Now real quick, I'm gonna put all the settings that I use to create this picture profile on the a7 III on the screen. So if you guys wanna pause the video, grab your camera and start putting in these settings and dial everything in, you can do that now. All right, so now that we've got my picture profile dialed into your camera, let's talk about these LUTs real quick. For the first 24 hours after this video is live, you guys can download all of the LUTs that I've created for this camera for free. After that, they'll all be available for purchase. So grab them now, share them with your friends, share them with your fellow filmmakers, and let's get started. All right, so last thing, before we jump into Premiere Pro, we're gonna need some footage. You can either go out and shoot some footage with my new picture profile on your camera, or you can go ahead and grab the footage that I put in the description below via the download link. All right, so now that we've got all that out of the way, let's jump into Premiere Pro and make that footage look cinematic. All right guys, so now that we're in Premiere Pro, let's bring in our footage. And the first thing we need to do is go to Window, scroll down and click on Lumetri Scopes. And we're gonna get our histogram on the right and our vector scope on the left. The vector scope is gonna help us align the white balance. And the histogram here is gonna help us align exposure and make sure everything looks good. Okay, so what we're gonna do is click on our shot Go over to effects and type in Lumetri color, drag that clip on our shot. And then let's close these for now because we don't need them. Okay, so I didn't use a white card or a gray card or anything like that to get white balance. Um, for the most part, when I'm shooting outside, I usually keep the white balance in the camera set to 5500K. However, if you didn't have your white balance set in camera, you can still get a good white balance in post. So let's assume that this shot was completely out of white balance. So I'm gonna just screw with the color here and mess with the tint. I know for a fact that this truck here in the background is white or close to it. So we're gonna use that as a white reference point. Now, we can't really see just that color right now because everything in this image is selected. And we kind of have reds, yellows, and blues. And our vector scope over here is really sad because it's all sitting near the yellow and red. So we need to isolate what we know is white. So what we're gonna do is go up to the opacity bar and click on create ellipse mask. We're gonna go over to the truck here, make sure we have a good circle. And then we're going to change the mask feather to zero and change the mask expansion so that it only selects that color and you can zoom in here if you want select H so we can move it around all right that pretty much covers that little area where we know is white so we just have a single dot here right now if you look here at the vector scope these two lines here intersect at the very center okay which represents a perfect white now you can see here that our color is way off here towards yellow and red it's not even anywhere near the center all right, so now what we're gonna do is make sure our shot is selected, and we're gonna start playing with the temperature of the image and the tint. So I'm gonna turn this histogram off real quick just so we can get a, a closer look here. And I'm just gonna keep adjusting these values here for color, temperature, and tint until we get this little circle here in the middle. So we're gonna scroll, we're gonna mess around. So it looks like dropping it down gets it closer here, and then bringing it back, let's see. All right, so let's see, negative two, zero seems to be ideal. Let's turn the histogram back on. So what we're gonna do is uh, delete this mask real quick. And our shot looks a lot better. Um, if you remember before, it was all washed out with yellows and reds and it just didn't look good. Okay, so now that we have our white balance correct, we wanna make sure our exposure is correct too. And thankfully the shot was properly exposed. So we don't need to worry too much about that. Now, if you did have a shot that was super underexposed and looked like that, well, you would need to bring up the exposure a little bit. Now, if you have something that's way overexposed, like by four or five stops, you won't be able to recover much just because it's not a raw image and you can't recover that data. 
But if it's only like a stop or two overexposed, you can still bring that exposure level down to kind of equalize things. Obviously in an ideal world, you're gonna to wanna to properly expose your image. You don't have to worry too much about this in post. So now that we have both of these done, we're gonna drop in our LUTs. Okay, so now we're gonna scroll down to the creative tab within Lumetri Color. We're gonna select look, we're gonna to go to browse, and you're gonna to navigate to where you saved your LUT files, and you're just gonna select Cinelux Neutral. Now, as you guys can see, we finally have a punchy looking image. It looks way better than it did before. And you can either leave it like this, or you can do a little bit more tweaking. I think we still have a little bit too much yellow here, so I'm thinking maybe going a little bit gloomier. So what we're gonna do is bring the color temperature down just a tad. And here, I think it looks really good because we still get some nice creamy whites on my dog. We get a nice rich, bluish hue to the black asphalt and we've got some really punchy yellows here and everything else looks good okay so i would say this looks pretty cinematic now if you want to adjust some things and give it some fade you can always go down to um, the adjustments tab here under the look and let's drop in 25 and you can see here when we go back to zero it's basically just lifting the black so you kind of get like a washed out faded look you can go up to 50 if you want um, but I wouldn't recommend anything more than that unless you're really kind of going all out with a faded, washed out look. So we're going to drop this back down to 25. I'm going to adjust your sharpness here if you'd like. Okay, so this shot looks pretty good. Um, now just to kind of go back, this is what it looked like beforehand. And then once we white balance and expose properly and drop down our LUT, and that looks like that. So it's pretty good. Now we're gonna move on to a different shot where the lighting source was completely different, completely different color temperature. So we don't really have anything in this shot that I know is pure white. However, the markings on her head are pretty close to it. So what we're gonna do is create another mask in the opacity tab, click on the ellipse, scroll up here, select her little heart shape thing here, turn off the feathering and scroll it down. Okay, so now we've got that selected. We're gonna do the same thing we did before. Let's go to effects, drop in a Lumetri color, go back to the effects tab. We're gonna turn off the histogram and you can see again here the white balance or the selection here is not perfectly white balanced. So we're gonna move this around until we get to a good spot. Let's bring this up, bring the color temperature down. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's turn on our histogram again. Yeah, you can see everything kind of blended in a little bit more. All right, let's go up, turn off our mask. Yeah, that looks way better. Okay, so now that we've got that properly white balance, the exposure is pretty good here. We don't have anything clipping on either end. So what we can do is go down to creative look, browse. So that's pretty much all I would do for this shot here. I mean, I can add some sharpness again. We can add in a little bit more fade, maybe add some contrast. And yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. Now, if you look, we turn off the white balance. You can see that if we had just put this LUT on this image without doing any white balance, you would have a whole bunch of yellow and reds. So it's always important to do white balance correctly before you start applying these LUTs. Let me turn that back on. You can see the difference. It looks way better. All right, guys, so that's pretty much it in terms of making your footage look cinematic fast. Just keep in mind that if you're not using my picture profile, you can still use these LUTs. However, you may not get the exact look that I've created and designed these LUTs for. Okay, guys, so that pretty much wraps up this tutorial. I hope you found that helpful. And if you did, be sure to drop me a thumbs up. If you guys have any questions or concerns about the picture profile or the LUTs, be sure to drop them in the comments below or just reach out to me on social media. If you don't already follow me on social media, you can find me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Wake Up to Ryan. Thanks again for watching, guys. If you haven't already subscribed, be sure to do so because I'm uploading weekly now and I've got a lot of really cool stuff in the works. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys next week. Peace.